Hey, Dale here from Jeep Solid. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out some of my other videos on how to measure the front shocks. Today I'm going to be covering how to measure the rear shocks. Now this is kind of a different process because there's a little bit of math involved and some angles, but don't worry, I'm not going to have you do that. That's what Google's for, right? What we're trying to do is figure out the proper size shocks to put on your Jeep. It's a fairly easy process, so let's get started. JeepSolid.com The first thing we're going to do is jack the Jeep up and put some jack stands on the frame of the Jeep. We want the axle of the Jeep to be able to hang down. So next I'm going to disconnect the shock from the bottom of the axle because I want to make sure that the axle has the maximum amount of drop that it can have. I don't want anything impeding it, impeding its drop. And now that I have the shock disconnected, the Jeep is up off the ground, supported by the frame. The axle is hanging freely. I'm at maximum drop of the axle right now, maximum extension. So I'm going to take some key measurements here. The first measurement I'm going to take is from where the axle mounts to the frame, down to the mount here on the axle, and that's 21 inches. The next measurement I'm going to take is from the bump stop down here to where it mounts on the axle and that is 14 and a half inches. Then I'm going to measure from the bump stop to the top of the axle and that is 9 inches. The last measurement I'm taking is from the center of the bump stop to where the top of the shock mounts and that is 11 inches. So now that we have our measurements, we know that from the mounting point on the frame to the mounting point at the bottom of the axle, this shock has to be a minimum of 21 inches in length. We want to actually exceed that because we don't want to overextend our shock. Now figuring out our compressed length of the shock, that's a little bit different because as the axle goes up to the bump stop, it's actually going to change the length of the triangle. Essentially, this is a triangle here. So I drew the triangle out here. The shock was 21 inches. It was 11 inches between the bump stop and the top of the shock mount. And then right now with our axle fully extended, from the bump stop to the bottom of the axle mounting point is 14 and a half inches. So this is with the shock fully extended at 21 inches. What we want to figure out next is what is our minimum compression of the shock as we shorten this length. All right, this is where it gets a little tricky, but stick with me, it's really not that hard. The last measurement we took was from the bump stop to the axle, and that was nine inches. So what we have to figure out is with our triangle here, this length right here from the bump stop to the bottom of the mounting point, was 14 and a half. If our axle travels up and hits our bump stop, we're going to shorten this length by 9 inches. When we shorten this length by 9 inches, we need to know what the length is of the shock. That is where we get on Google and use our laptop here and pull up a calculator for us. Okay, now that we have the lengths of all three sides of our triangle, the key is actually going to be to figure out what this angle is, because this angle right there is not going to change. This angle is going to change as, as the shock compresses, as is this angle. So now that we've put these three figures into the Google Calculator and figured out this angle is 110 degrees, we're going to get rid of this 21 inches because that's going to change. We're going to take that 14.5, subtract our 9 inches off of it, which leaves five and a half, so this is going to change to five and a half. Now we can put these three figures back into that calculator on Google and it'll tell us what the length of this side is. And that comes out to be 13.8 inches. So we also want to account for a little compression of the bump stop 
So we actually want something shorter than this 13.8, maybe say 13 inches. If you can't find a shock that'll allow for these dimensions that you've figured, the best way to change the minimum length is to change out your bump stop. A lot of Jeeps have a little bit of lift on them. Sometimes you have to change out the bump stop for a bump stop that's a little bit longer. So there you go, figuring out the minimum and maximum length of the shocks needed is really not that hard. Just takes a little bit of geometry and a Google calculator. But anyways, hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of my other videos in the description below. Check that out. Thanks for watching and have a good day.